Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at cosine rule. Now, cosine rule is used with non-right-angled triangles, okay? That's the first thing to note. Whenever you see a non-right-angled triangle, uh, then you have only two options, basically, and the two options are it's either going to be sine rule or cosine rule. Now, I have a whole separate video on sine rule, so you can take a look at that. But this video is going to focus on cosine rule. So how do you use cosine rule and uh, what is the actual rule? So this is, if you like, the formula for cosine rule. And this appears on page 16 of the log tables. Here we go. So here you see you have sine rule and here you have cosine rule. And they're the only two options with a non-right angled triangle. Okay, so it's got to be one or the other. So cosine rule is this. Now it looks quite long and complicated, but once we figure out exactly how to fill in the piece of information, uh, it should work out quite nicely for us. The calculator will do an awful lot of the work as well, which will help. So one of the key things about filling it in is this angle here must be between these two sides. Okay, so when you're filling it in, that's the most important thing, that whatever you're filling in for the angle, that angle must be between those two sides. So the two sides lengths that you put in here must be enclosed around this angle. Uh, I saw once on a little video that another, a good way of remembering to use the cosine rule is when you ever see like a cosy angle, thinking of cosine rule. Uh, the angle is surrounded by these two sides and that's exactly how we fill it in. So let's jump straight to an example to see exactly uh, how this works. So let's take the example where we are looking for this side length x. We have 9 centimeter length, we have 7 centimeter length, and we have the angle here 42. And straight away, we should be able to spot that the 42 is nice and cozy between these two sides. Uh, so straight away, it's helping us identify, given that it's a non right angle triangle, of course, we are going to use cosine rule. So writing out the rule for yourself uh, is always the first step and making sure you take it down accurately is really important. Now, remember when you're filling in the angle, that angle must go between these two sides. So obviously this is the angle involved in the question, 42, and these are the two sides that surround the angle. Now it doesn't matter which way around you put the 9 and 7, it's all going to work out for you, so that's the good news. It doesn't matter which way around you put them in, but they must go in for the B and C. That's the key thing. Which means then the X is going to go in for the A. So instead of A squared, we're going to have X squared equals, and I'll put the 9 in first, 9 squared plus, and now I'll sub in the 7, 7 squared minus 2, again, always put brackets around anything you sub in, uh, 9 and, of course, 7. You see, these two sides must enclose this angle, and they do, and so the angle goes in then cos 42. Okay, so it looks quite long and complicated, but the good news is that the calculator is going to do uh, the majority of the work here. So I'm just going to be really careful, but I'm going to type this in on the calculator exactly as I see it. So let's take a look. So I have a bracket, 9 squared, close the brackets and squared, plus bracket 7, close the bracket and squared, minus 2, bracket 9, close it, and 7 in brackets, cosine, and of course then I have 42 in brackets and then close it. So now I've made sure I've typed it in exactly as I have it here on the right hand side and I'm getting 36.36375. Now I don't want to round too early in the question because that would affect my overall accuracy. So I'm going to write that down uh, exactly as I have it on the calculator. 36.36375199 and now to solve for x on its own, well, how do you undo a square? Well, to undo a square, we do, of course, square root. So we're going to square root this answer. So I have it up on the calculator still. So I'm going to press square root. And I'm just going to press answer here so I don't have to type the whole thing in again. Square root the answer I just got equals and I get 6.030. So I'm going to do it to... Uh, 
two decimal places. So that would be 0 0.03. Look at the number after always. Zero does not make the three bump up. So the answer is 6.03. And of course, it is centimeters. Okay, so try this question. So again, we've got a non-right angled triangle. Uh, we can see the angle is cosy between those two sides. Another way of identifying that it's cosine rule over sine rule, because there are your only two options when it's non-right angle triangles, is if you remember with sine rule, you had to link opposites. Well, if you're looking at your non-right angle triangle and you realize you can't link the opposites, you don't have enough information to link opposites, then that's another way to figure out that it has to be cosine rule. So I'm going to write out cosine rule for myself again. And again, it's in the log tables. Make sure you take it down accurately. And now we'll go about filling it in. And remember, this angle must be between those two sides. So this is the angle, obviously, I'm going to be subbing in here. And it's got to be between those two sides, which means 12 and 9 must be my B and C. And again, it doesn't matter which way around you get them. It'll all work out. OK, so the key thing, though, that the A squared, what I'm going to sub in here for the A must be the X. It's always going to be the side opposite the angle. So, filling it in. Pause the video, by the way, if you feel confident. Uh, you get a head start over me and see how you get on. So we have x squared equals, and then I'm going to put the 12 in first. 12 squared, and then the 9 minus 2 times 12 and 9. And again, I'm careful. Whatever I'm subbing in, I'm keeping brackets around it. And the angle then goes in cosine 65. And now I'm going to do the whole thing on the calculator, being very careful to type it in exactly as I have it. And so I have bracket 12 squared uh, plus bracket 9 squared uh, minus 2 times 12, 9 in brackets, cosine 65, close the brackets, and I'm getting 133.7144555. I'm going to write the whole thing out. So Still having x squared on the left-hand side, of course, and then 133.7144555. And now, final step. Now, of course, you're always trying to solve for x. You're always trying to get the x on its own. So to undo the square, we square root. Write the whole thing out because you want to get all the marks uh, and you don't want to skip steps because if you do make a mistake, uh, then it guarantees that you'll get still a lot of the marks. So I still have it up on the calculator's display. So I'm just going to do square root and then press answer. And that will square root the previous answer I had on the display. Equals. And of course, I have, let's do two decimal places again. Uh, always look carefully in the question to see what way they want you to write the answer. But we'll do two decimal places for this example. So 11.56 is to two decimal places. Always look at the number after. The number after is a three. That doesn't make the six bump up. So I can leave it as it is, 11.56. And of course, don't forget your units, centimeters. Okay, let's try this question. Now, here again, we've got a non-right angle triangle. So in your head straight away, when you spot this, you've got two options. You've got sine rule or cosine rule. Uh, if you try to link, op link opposites, we'll see that we actually can't. Uh, we have an angle here that's nice and cozy between two sides. So that is what tells us we must use the cosine rule. So cosine rule, let's write it out for ourselves, is of course this. And remember, this angle must be between these two sides. Now, on this particular question, I don't know what the angle is, but I do have all the other pieces of information that I need to fill into the cosine rule. So let's fill it in as best we can. So this is the angle between these two sides, which means 4 and 6 is what I must sub in for the B and the C. So 5 then must be the A. So subbing in the 5 for A... I'll do the 4 for the B and I'll do the 6 for the C. And again, it doesn't make, matter which way around you get these, uh, both will work. So uh, 2, of course, I mustn't forget my 2, times uh, 4 times 6, cosine, and we don't know that angle, so I'll leave it as cosine x. Now, this is a bit trickier. We're going to have to do a good bit of manipulation on this one um, in order to get 
cos x on its own first to then be able to get x the angle on its own, okay? So let's just take it nice and easy and just do one thing at a time. The first thing I'm going to do in the next step is just evaluate uh, my numbers that are squared here. So 5 squared is, of course, 25. 4 squared is, of course, 16. 6 squared is, of course, 36. And minus 2 times 4 times 6, well, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 times 6 is, of course, uh, 48. Cos x. Now, that minus 48 is attached to the cos x, which, of course, means that it's being multiplied. All right, so watch out for that. So the next step, the only thing that I can do next in order to kind of start tidying this up a little bit is to add together these two numbers, okay? Because, as I said, the minus 48 is attached to the cos x, so it's being multiplied to the cos x, okay? So the only thing I can do to evaluate in the next step is add your 16 and your 36. So 25 is still on the left-hand side. 16 add 36 is, of course, 52. And then I have minus 48 times cos x. Okay, so remember with your solving equations in algebra, anything that's multiplied we always leave till the very end, okay? So the same is going to uh, hold true here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the 52 first because I want to break this down first of all to get the cos x on its own and then to get x on its own and I'll keep it of course here on the right hand side. So in order to get rid of 52 I'm going to subtract 52 from that side and of course if I subtract 52 from that side I've got to subtract 52 from that side. That will then give me 25 take away 52 is of course minus 27 on the left hand side equals that's gone and I still have minus 48 cosine x on the right hand side and now I look to get rid of the minus 48 which is being times to remember to the cos x so the way to get rid of something that's being times is of course to divide so to get rid of minus 48 I will divide by minus 48 okay the minus 48 is being multiplied to the cosine x, so the only way to get rid of it is to divide by the minus 48. Of course, if I divide the right-hand side by minus 48, I have got to divide the left-hand side by minus 48 as well. That will get rid of that, which is what I want, and I'm left with cos x is equal to, and of course, you have minus 27 over minus 48 here on the left-hand side. Now, I'm not going to evaluate that just yet because I'm going to let the calculator do the majority of the work. All I want to do now is get x on its own. So, do we remember from our trigonometry from Junior Cert, how do you look for an angle, or how do you undo the cos? And if you remember, to undo the cos, we do cos inverse. So cos inverse minus 27 divide by minus 48 will give me the x on its own. Whenever you're looking for an angle, remember, you always use the cos inverse uh, or sine inverse or tan inverse, depending on what you're dealing with. Obviously, with cosine rule, we'll be doing cos inverse, inverse in order to find the angle. So on the calculator, I'm going to get cos inverse. And remember how to do that. We have to press shift, cos, and then that will give me the cos inverse in yellow on the top. So cos inverse comes up on my calculator there. Then I'll press the fraction button. And of course, I have minus 27 on the top and I have minus 48 on the bottom. Close the bracket and now press equals. This is now then the angle, 55.77. Well, let's do two decimal places here for the angle as well. Uh, so 55.77, look at the number after. That's a one. Does the one make it bump up? No. So the answer is 55.77 degrees. Okay, so this is the final example. Uh, let's take a look at this question. Again, we're going to look for this angle here. We can see straight away it's a non-right angle triangle. So you've only got two options, sine rule or cosine rule. I haven't got enough information to link opposites. I can see that the angle is quite cosy between the two sides, so I know to use cosine rule. So a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. There it is. And again, as I said, it's in your log tables. 
Let's fill it in then. This angle must always be between these two sides, remember? So there's my angle and there are the two sides that it's in between. So the seven and the eight is what I'm gonna sub in for the B and the C, which implies then that for A, I'm gonna sub in 10. Remember, do pause the video if you feel confident, you try and do it ahead of me. 10 squared is equal to, and then as I said, I'm gonna sub in the seven and the eight for the B and the C, and again, keeping brackets around everything you sub in always. That's always really important, all right? And it just really helps you avoid any mistakes. Uh, and identify exactly what's being multiplied, because the brackets will always remind you uh, of what's being multiplied. And remember, this over here, attached to the cos x, is of course being multiplied to the cos x. Right, so we're solving for the x. We're going to have to get cosine x on its own first. We've got a little bit of manipulation to do before we can do that. Let's just go the next step, evaluating uh, the squares here. So 10 squared is, of course, 100. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64, and minus 2 times 7 times 8, uh, or put that in the calculator, 2 bracket 7 bracket, and in 8 in brackets, we are getting 112 cosine x. So it's minus 112 times cosine x there. Okay, so the next little step, all we can do next is add together these numbers, okay? So I have 49 and 64, so 100 is still on the left-hand side, 49 and 64 is 113 minus and 112 times cosine x. So now remember, anything that's multiplied, we always leave till the end. So we'll get rid of the 113 first. So to get rid of 113, we'll take it away. If you take it away on the right-hand side, you'll of course take it away on the left-hand side. So 113 uh, from 100 or 100 take away 113 is of course minus 13. That's now gone. And on the right hand side, I still have minus 112 times cosine x. Okay, now to get rid of the minus 112, which is being multiplied to the cosine x, we must divide by it. And if I divide by it on the right hand side, I've got to divide by it on the left hand side. So that gets rid of that and leaves me with this. Oops. There we go. And to get x on its own, looking for that angle, to undo the cos, if you like, it will be, of course, cos inverse. Okay, so let's do that on the calculator. Shift cos gets up cos inverse, put your fraction button, and of course I have minus 13 on the top, and, oops, get rid of that, minus 112 on the bottom. Close the bracket and press equals. And I'm getting 83.33. We'll do two dozen places again, uh, but obviously in your question, whatever comes up, read that very carefully. They'll give you some guidelines as to what to give the answer accuracy as. Uh, two dozen places we'll do for the example. Look at the number after. Four does not make it bump up, which implies then that we have 83.33 degrees.